Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and today I'm going to do a little show. I'm kind of going to go old school on you a little bit. For those of you that weren't around in the last couple of years, you'll, you'll kind of get, you'll get it after this video. And the reason I wanted to do it is because so many people see this as green candles and red candles in the market and how, how whether, whether cryptocurrency is up or down. But what, what a lot of people don't understand is crypto was not created for the green candles and the retail and all of that. It was created for all the freaking marbles, folks. And we're talking about, I've said several times, we're talking about the prevention of World War III and replacing the petrodollar and going into a new system, a Bretton Woods 2 or 3.0, whatever you want to call it. So before I get going, I want to, I want to tell you something. I did my taxes this year and I used a software, it's an online service called Coin Tracker, okay? And what it does is it goes into, basically you, you, you um, hook up all of your accounts. Like, um, you know, I talk about my sponsor Uphold, so you would, you would uh, log into your Uphold account and you would hook it up to Coin Tracker. You would do it, that with any of the other ones, Coinbase, any of the, and then once you do that, it literally sucks in all of your transactions and spits out the tax forms and you can hand or email the tax forms to your accountant. It is a lifesaver and um, it's one of those things that people out there better hope they're using something like this going forward. Um, so this is what I do and I'll have a, I, I liked it so much that I reached out to them um, they ignored me and then later on they sent me an email and, and um, I worked it out where they could be a sponsor because I, I loved their product so much. I, don't, I really don't have any sponsors that, where I don't use the product. Um, so, and then like Uphold the sponsor, I use them all the time. I, the, actually yesterday I think I used Uphold to buy Songbird tokens and I wrapped those bad boys too. Um, and then, uh, so I use that for my taxes and then also Clinton Donnelly, don't forget about Clinton Donnelly because he, you know, if, if you run into any issues, once you have done your taxes using something like coin tracker, you can, uh, you can also join his audit defense. I'll put the link to this in the top of the description and you can join his audit defense and you can also, um, he, he does consulting. So if your account needed to talk to somebody who's a crypto tax specialist, they could get on the phone with Clinton Donnelly. And he has all he has all kinds of services. So the link to that will be in the top of the description. Now, let's talk about what's really important here. This was um this was on uh, Maria Bartiromo. Listen to this. Telling Arab leaders on Friday that he wants to buy oil and gas with the Chinese yuan instead of the U.S. dollar, furthering his goal to internationalize the Chinese currency and replace the dollar as the reserve currency of the world. President Xi met with the regional leaders of the entire Middle East and North Africa, some 20-something nations. This is a slight paradigm shift that's beginning to take place here, and it has strategic significance that a lot of the media is, is missing. It wasn't... The digital asset investor is not missing it. It's the meeting with uh, Mohammed bin Salman from Saudi Arabia. He hosted this regional summit, something similar that President Trump did in 2017 mm. when he met with the regional leaders being hosted by Mohammed bin Salman. So we've come a long way since July of 2017 because this relationship between the United States and the Arab world is tarnished. I have one. Re now, listen to his recommendation because this goes right into what we talked about yesterday. Recommendation here for the administration. Work with the incoming Prime Minister of Israel, Prime Minister Netanyahu, who wants to strengthen and expand the Abraham Accords. That Remember that? Abraham Accords. That's what Jared Kushner went over there and was working on at the end of the Trump administration, folks. Okay? And I, I, I remember seeing that and then watching the next president come in. I remember seeing that and saying, now, if they worked out peace between Israel and these countries and uh, these uh, Arab countries, 
uh, for the first time in 50 years, that's not something that's just going to be let go very lightly. I mean, that's something that prevents World War III, right? Means relationship with Arabs and Israelis. Work with him and have him help you renew the relationship with the Arabs. After telling Arab leaders on Friday that he wants to buy oil and... All right. So you've got, and that's what the petrodollar is, is, is when, um, when Kissinger went over on behalf of Nixon and worked out with Saudi Arabia, you make everybody buy your oil in dollars and we'll protect you, okay? That is what's being scrapped right now. This is Jared Kushner when he, when he was uh, working with Benjamin Netanyahu when back President in- President Trump. And, and look, look how significant the date here is, folks. There are no coincidences. This is December 27th, 2020, about five days or so after the SEC drops the lawsuit on Ripple, thus halting Ripple for two years. Uh, first called upon you to advance his efforts to bring peace to the Middle East. And all the experts, you know, the so-called experts, belittle your appointment. By the way, I, I ask you, don't take it personally. They do it to me, too. <laughs> now... You can say, I can say, how wrong these naysayers were. You can be proud of your contribution to normalizing Israel's relations with the Arab and Muslim worlds and for peace in the Middle East. Ah. Mark, can you read this? Somebody? No? Um, it says. Yeah, yeah. In recognition of Jared Kushner, senior advisor to the President of the United States, for his historic contribution to the Abraham Accords, the normalization of Israel's relations with the Arab and Muslim world, and to peace in the Middle East. Thank you. You're more short-sighted than me. All right, I won't play the rest of that because you need to see a couple of more things. Yesterday, I tweeted this out. Um, if I was trying to pre pre prevent WW3, Middle East peace, would be a critical, uh, I'd, I'd uh, propose a, a global bridge digital asset, da, da, da. But anyway, we had the picture of Elon Musk. And look, folks, I've been saying for a long time, I think Elon Musk is all up in this XRP thing. I think that the Starlink satellites was for the purpose, partially for the purpose of having uh, nodes. This way you can create this trustless economy. Yeah, China could have nodes there. They could have their own satellites, have nodes on there. They can have nodes underground all over China, all over Russia. All of a sudden, you've got a situation where you can create this new world order that they keep referring to, but a peaceful world order. So you've got Kushner now sitting here talking to Elon Musk right after Elon Musk starts releasing the truth on what's going on, going on, on Twitter for the last few years. We've got Jared Kushner, who, whose family was friends with Netanyahu and donors from the time he was a child. He literally spent the night at their house. You got uh, Jared Kushner and his buddy, um, uh, Ken Kirsten, who Ken Kirsten was on Ripple's board. You, here's the, the peace accords. And then there's Steve Mnuchin with him. We talked about this a lot back in the day. Here's Christine Lagarde. Well, that's significant. If you remember, remember when Brad Garlinghouse, how does Brad Garlinghouse get into Switzerland in a room with all these people? There's Christine Lagarde. There's the chief executive of the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. There's Saudi Arabian Monetary, Monetary Authority. There's the Monetary Markets IMF, almost as if they're all sitting here having a planning session together. And there's the BIS guy. Okay. Then you have this. This is Jim Rickards who is X three letter agency that we don't say on this channel. Watch this. So here's a, here's this is from November 3rd, 2018. Preview of the future. When I say the future, everything on the slide is already in development or working. So this is not science fiction. This is not something for the 22nd century. It's happening now. Um, basically China and Russia are building their own cryptocurrency system. Now, when I say cryptocurrency, don't go out and buy Bitcoin. I, I don't like Bitcoin. I think it's the worst thing you could do. Uh, but, they, but the world of cryptocurrencies is not limited to Bitcoin. There are actually over 2,000 cryptocurrencies, some of them quite small. But you could invent, you could go home tonight with the right software, you could invent your own cryptocurrency called the, uh, the Icon Coin. Um, but, uh, 
that Russia and China are developing their own. Uh, what used to be called the blockchain, uh, today people call it the distributed ledger. So this is distributed ledger technology. Uh, they're developing their own coin or token. It'll be heavily encrypted, military-grade encryption, uh, with their own pipes, meaning their own kind of private internet. And imagine an economy that looks like the following. So Iran um, sells oil to China. North Korea sells weapons to Iran. China sells infrastructure to Russia. Russia sells weapons to China. Russians take a vacation in Turkey because it's a pretty country, uh, and so on. So you, I've just described a whole trading network, and imagine it's all done with this cryptocurrency. So all we do is keep score. And you can keep score with baseball cards, bottle caps. I mean, it doesn't have to be money to keep score. It's just a way of keeping track. Peg to the SDR, the special drawing right, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Managed through a, a cryptocurrency system that's encrypted uh, and um, uh, secure. And then every now and then, once a month, once a quarter, once a year, we look at the chits and we decide who owes what to whom and we settle up in gold. And we put the gold on a plane, fly it over to the other guy, and there it is. Um, so this is a combination of a 21st cryptocurrency system with a 19th century or 5th century BC, if you like, gold system. You're combining the two, the oldest form of money and the newest form of money. Notice what's missing in everything I just described. No dollars. There's no dollar in that system. Uh, the SDR, the cryptocurrency, gold, the ledger, the trading network, all play a role, but there's no dollar in that system. That's what we're moving up towards. All right. Uh, SBF has agreed to be extradited to the U.S. and will rob either. This was yesterday. Apparently, he got stalled in uh, in being extradited because BitBoy went down there and filed, uh, got somebody who had been affected by the thing, I think this is the way it went, got them to file um, some kind of paperwork that prevented him from getting extradited. I think he's miserable in that prison. Here's what they say on CNBC. Yeah. In the meantime, former FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried and his legal team will get a second crack at an extradition hearing today. Kate Rooney joins us right now with more. Kate, good morning. Good morning, Becky. That's right. Sam Bankman-Fried is back in a Bahamas prison after a pretty chaotic day in court yesterday. The former FTX CEO had been widely expected to waive extradition and be immediately sent back to the U.S. That didn't happen. Instead, there was confusion between his Bahamian and American legal teams, his U.S. attorneys, declined to comment, but NBC News telling us both sides showed confusion. The hearing had been scheduled so that Bankman Freed could accept extradition, but his lawyers said his client wanted to see the indictment against him before making any decisions. And a local defense attorney there said he was surprised to even see Bankman Freed in court at all. And at the end of the day, his local attorney told Reuters and other local reporters that his client had agreed to extradition voluntarily, defying, quote, the strongest possible legal advice. That's what we do expect today. A source tells us that Bankman Freed is expected to accept extradition at another hearing at 10 a.m. today. If and when that happens, we'll see. He would. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, we'll just stop right. Well, no, I'll just cover this. Supply of silver has been shrinking even more rapidly than gold. The drainage since the start of the year has been nothing short of spectacular. 48.5 million ounces have left register, uh, registered since January 1. That represents more than 50% of the balance of 82 million ounces last December 31st. So, <clears throat> I mean, I would imagine that all these countries know that this system is about to, to be back to some sort of a gold standard, or some kind of an SDR that's, that uh, has all these precious metals in the in a basket like gold silver and maybe some currencies and all that who knows um, but but you have to believe that they'll be they're hoarding on the lead up to this thing the digital asset investor is hoarding <laughs> I'm the digital asset investor I'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe hit the like button tell your friends and family Comex silver registered ratio falls to 11.1% lowest in 22 years. There are no coincidences. Thanks for.